Today we're going to be repairing my DS1054 oscilloscope. As you can see, it's already taken apart because originally I didn't plan on making this video. Originally I was just going to take it apart, replace my broken component, and put it back together, but I thought I would share my experience with you. The actual repair that we're doing is replacing this encoder here. Um, as you can see, the top part that turns snapped off for it, so you could no longer use this top knob. We're just going to be desoldering this switch and replacing it with a new one. This is not a perfect match uh, for the switch that's here because I couldn't get an exact part number or a replacement part from Rigol. Uh, they offered me a $60 replacement board of this, but instead I decided to find a similar encoder to replace it with, and hopefully that worked. A few notes if you're doing something like this yourself. First of all, you're going to have to void your warranty, so you have to keep that in mind if you're going to be repairing a machine like this. And second, you want to take a lot of pictures and keep your screws organized. For mine, I just tape them to a piece of paper and label them as to where they go, because you don't want to put it back together and be left with two or three screws that you have no idea where they're supposed to go. So let's get to swapping out the switch. We're going to start by just desoldering all of these pads on the back here and then pull the switch out and then we'll solder in the new one. I'm just going to use these arms to hold uh, my PCB in place while I desolder the switch. So the switch is desoldered and we're going to switch it out with our new one. There is the new switch. All soldered in. Now we just have to fit the oscilloscope back together and see if it works. There's the keypad PCB installed into the front. Now we put back this ribbon cable. There's the knob that was broken. Here we're screwing the front plastic plate in. And that is the main part of the scope complete. This is basically what makes up the entire scope apart from the power supply that's housed in this big shell. This is the last piece that we need to put together. Um, it's the metal piece that houses the power supply and fan blowing across it. Can't forget to plug the fan connector and power cable back in. That's the main body of the scope with the power supply in, and I'm going to uh, plug it in and test it out before I put the final piece on. Moment of truth. As you can see, the knob that was previously broken works. Adjusting the intensity here. So we're going to turn it off and put the final piece back on. 
And there you have it. I think overall this repair was pretty successful. I didn't have much trouble putting it back together. I just looked at the pictures I had and I had labeled all my screws so it was really easy to figure out. Another reason why people switch out this knob um, isn't actually because it's broken, but some people do it because they want the, the steps instead of a continuous motion so that they can select specifically for each click one item down the menu. However, if you're doing this for that purpose, you have to make sure to get the exact correct encoder because mine currently takes two steps to move down every one menu item. But overall, I'm happy with how this turned out and now I have a functioning scope. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.